and it's the percent of jobs that's known and published, things you would find in a career fair, things you'd find on the web, that sort of thing. The average competition for those jobs is 300 to 1. The next 70% represents the hidden job market. These are jobs that are known inside a company or in the mind of a hiring manager, but they haven't been published anywhere yet. <clears throat> the average competition for those jobs is 20 to 1. The last 5% here are create the market jobs, which means the hiring manager doesn't even know they have the need for a person, but you are having a discussion about that person's business and your skills, and you go, ah, I think I could help this person. And you help create the job, and then you only have to sell yourself. <clears throat> so the obvious message here is the, that most of the employment opportunities that will be available to you throughout your career will not be in the open job market. And the only way to access those 75% of your job market is to network with other people. All of the connections we've noted, it doesn't matter where, it could be your neighbor across the street, <clears throat> or possibilities into the job, next job market. Excuse me, I'll take it just a And I want to remind you that networking is a two-way street. It's not networking if you ask for help and you don't give it in return. Uh, it's, it's so you can help others find places where their talents are appreciated and used. Okay, I just want to recap now some of the things we've talked about and add a couple more facts on this historical milestone slide. I began by introducing to you uh, Elizabeth Cady Stanton and Susan B. Anthony, who met for the first time in 1851. That was 14 years before the Civil War ended and the 13th Amendment to the Constitution that would abolish slavery everywhere in the United States. Five years after that, in 1870, our university was founded as a land-grant college. And that same year, the 15th Amendment was ratified, prohibiting the denial of suffrage based on race, color, or previous servitude. Sixty years after Stanton and Anthony met, <clears throat> Eva Hurdler would be the first female student to graduate from the Missouri School of Mines and Metallurgy. She actually completed all the coursework for a mining degree, but she was only granted a general science degree. And of course, she still didn't have the right to vote. It wasn't until 1922 that Jenny Lennox would receive the first engineering degree from MSM in chemical engineering. And of course, by then, the uh, 19th Amendment had been ratified, and so Jenny also was finally able to vote. Leela Thompson became the first African-American woman to graduate from MSM in 1960. She was only the fourth woman to receive a civil engineering degree from the school. And in the same decade, civil rights legislation was passed to make public places, education, and the elective franchise more accessible to all citizens, regardless of race or color. The ratification of the 24th Amendment, abolishing poll taxes, also occurred at this time. And in 1971, 18-year-olds, like me, could finally vote. And I'm grateful for all the women before me whose work opened doors of opportunity, and I'm honored to follow in their footsteps. The future is unfolding exponentially. And what history you and I write from tonight on, I don't know. But I believe we will be well served if we lead from our strengths, if we speak up, stay connected, and if we do it, not for ourselves alone. Thank you.